Tesco.com's Vision of the Future is an immersive Windows client application. Here is the prototype built by those extraordinary people at Conchango. The application is a Windows client using Windows Presentation Foundation. It delivers an immersive user experience incorporating impressive graphics and the latest touch technology. Let's explore the application in more detail. For me, one of the most impressive screens is the product detail screen. Here, a customer can virtually handle the goods as well as see all the relevant nutritional information about them. This part of the screen is built up using a combination of WPF elements. The most impactful element, the 3D product, is presented using a viewport 3D element which knows how to show 3D meshes. The viewport 3D could be contained in a stack panel to allow the other information controls to be aligned with it. As well as labels, there are some custom controls presenting the nutritional facts and quantity to order buttons. The nutritional facts could be implemented using a custom list box control with a custom data template for the list box items. The buttons have a custom control template giving them that pleasant gel effect. Let's look at building the 3D product viewer first. Inside Visual Studio 2008, the XAML designer provides a split view of the design and the XAML. It is actually very easy to present a 3D mesh and to allow a user to move it around. There is very little code to write, particularly if you have produced your 3D mesh in a graphical design tool like Expression Blend or 3D Paintbrush. A real beauty of a shortcut is provided in the Codeplex 3D Tools library. This is a free library of WPF 3D functionality. Adding it to our project allows us to use the trackball decorator which provides all the view manipulation functionality. All we have to do is provide the 3D mesh for the viewport 3D. Let's look at the content of the mesh in more detail. The mesh geometry 3D elements contain all the data that describes how to draw the mesh from a series of triangle definitions. The points for the triangles are contained in the positions collection. The triangle indices collection tells WPF in what order to draw the triangles. The texture coordinates collection describes how to map the provided texture to the 3D mesh by linking mesh points with texture coordinates. The remaining elements in the th viewport 3D definition describe the viewport camera position. That is the direction the user is looking from to the mesh. And then the lighting and the materials used to render the mesh. Mesh zero here is the yogurt pot, which has the product label applied to it. Mesh one is the transparent lid on the yogurt pot. This is drawn using a specular material to reflect light and with a lower opacity to appear transparent. Lighting is defined as both a directional light and an ambient light. The behaviour of light sources and meshes are further described with transforms. Remember that you don't need to code up these details. A variety of graphics tools enable you to design meshes and export them as XAML ready for you to use in your viewport 3D. So again, there are literally only a few lines of code to write. Let's run this application to see the final result. The nutritional facts are presented using the same symbols as found on the product packaging. These symbols need to be constructed in some way. Here I've used nested combined geometry elements to construct the shape we're after. The inner nest builds up the large yellow cylinder shape by combining two ellipses with a rectangle. The combination mode for these elements is union. At the outer level of the nest I'm using exclude. This cuts out the semicircle that intersects the bottom of our cylinder shape. 
Having designed the symbol, we can now use the XAML as part of a data template definition to create the custom presentation of a control. Here we're using a list box as the base control for our nutritional facts. Contained within a layout grid, our shape is combined with text blocks that format and present the specific nutrient fact. The fact data is obtained using data binding. We'll look at data binding in more detail in another video. Finally, we tie our data template to our list box control. At runtime, we can populate the list box with the nutritional facts for the current product on screen. The nutritional fact list box items are organized into a horizontal orientation from left to right. Moving back to the product screen, let's take a quick look at some of the effects used. Looking at the controls to the right of the screen, we can see a nifty looking ring with a blur effect and info cards. Again, this effect and layout is easy to code up. Here we have a grid layout element with several row and column definitions. I've set show grid lines to true to make it easier to see what is happening. You can see the cyan circle on display. There is also a very thin dodger blue circle just outside the cyan circle. The dodger blue circle has a bitmap effect tied to it. This effect is the outer glow bitmap effect. It causes a glow to radiate out of the element. You can't see this glow in the designer, so let's run the application to see it. Now you can see the glow effect. The cyan circle being just inside the dodger blue one makes it look like the glow has emphasis on the outside of the cyan circle. This is a very simple representation of the full effect in the Tesco.com application. You can have great fun building out details such as this. The info card elements are just label and image elements positioned within the grid. The Tesco.com application prototype, built by Conchango, demonstrates the rich, immersive experience that can be created with Windows Presentation Foundation. Take a closer look at WPF using these resources.